Today on Northo 2 we are going to be talking about gorgons, or more commonly known in the scientific community as gorgonopsids. These animals are older than dinosaurs and they ruled the earth for most of the Permian. Before we talk about how awesome these animals were, let's talk about their origins. So first we need to go back to the Middle Permian period. 270 million years ago, before the great mammals and before the dinosaurs, strange animals ruled the earth. Groups like Dinosophilians and huge herbivores like Periosaur inhabited our planet. These animals look like strange alien creatures to us, but they are really our distant relatives. Most of the animals by this time were still relatively primitive. They had poor, lizard-like postures and strange bodies. During the Middle Permian period, a group of animals called Dinosophilians ruled the earth. Dinosophilians were a very diverse group that were predators and herbivores. At this time, the first Gorgonopsids were still small, dog-like creatures. It wasn't until the Dinosophilians went extinct that the Gorgonopsids would become the apex predators of the Permian. These Gorgons were not reptiles, but rather very primitive mammals. They were descendants of animals from the late Carboniferous period like Dimetrodon. They had many mammalian features in their skulls, they have differentiated tooth shape, developed legs, and even ear bones. Unlike many other animals of the Permian, these animals had a better posture for walking and running. Though it was still primitive compared to modern day animals, Gorgonopsids could outrun most of the other slow animals that they lived with. Like I do for these videos, I'll be talking about the Gorgonopsids as a singular species even though they're a very diverse group with numerous members. So first of all, one of the most striking features of these animals were their heads. Gorgonopsid actually means Gorgon face. This was because of how ugly and brutish their faces were. Gorgons had a very unique and advanced dentary for the time. Their incisors overlapped, giving them the ability to be able to shear off flesh. They had large canine teeth that are considered to be saber teeth. In the largest Gorgon discovered, these saber teeth were 6 inches long. In total, they had about 24 teeth, which is a relatively low amount, but if given time to evolve, I think their jaws would have evolved more teeth in the back just like the jaws of modern day predators. Studies on the skulls of Gorgonopsids have shown that they had a good sense of smell, relatively good vision, and pretty advanced ears for the time. Because of the adaptations in these animals' skulls, you can see why they were the apex predator of their time. Most of the other animals that are around had very poor senses, really bad running speeds, and just overall very primitive animals. Large sharp teeth and good senses made this animal very effective at killing prey. Since these animals have been considered to be mammals, there has been a lot of speculation over what covered their skin. It is thought that these animals were completely covered in hair, but not a lot of it. Their skin may have resembled an elephant or some weird combination of hair and scales. The reason for this thinking is because hair has been found in fossilized poop during the time. So to sum up these animals, they had horrifying jaws, possibly a light covering of fur, and a mammalian stance. So now that you understand the morphology of these creatures, let's look at the individual species. Eleurosaurus was a cat-like Gorgonopsid. Eleuro meaning cat and saurus meaning lizard. Sir Richard Owens was the first one to describe the animal and he thought it might be the ancestor to the cat-like marsupials, but not a cat itself. There are five discovered species in this genus and they are all small nimble creatures. It is likely that they played a role similar to modern day carnivorous animals like cats and small dogs. I think these animals are very interesting because they are a lot smaller than all the other Gorgonopsids and this was obviously because they had a niche for being small. Dino Gorgon was a wolf-like Gorgonopsid. It was about the size of a dog or a wolf at about 2 meters long and over a half a meter tall. Since it was a very widespread animal in the Permian, it must have been very successful. It mainly ate small reptiles and other stem mammals of the time. So finally, the king of the Permian, Enostransivia. This animal is the largest discovered Gorgonopsid and the apex predator of the Permian. Individuals were almost 12 feet long and had massive skulls. These skulls were 2 feet long with saber teeth that were 6 inches long. They weighed an estimated 1,000 pounds and could take on the largest animals of their time. Scutosaurus was one of the largest herbivores of the Permian and it was covered in armor. Even with all that armor and all that muscle, it was not safe from the teeth of Enos transivia. Gorgonopsids were a very awesome and diverse group, but their reign on Earth would end. These animals were wiped out by the worst mass extinction the world has ever seen. It was caused by meteor impacts, volcanic activity, and a widespread climate change. 70% of terrestrial vertebrate species went extinct, and 96% of marine species disappeared as well. It is a shame that most of these Permian animals had to go extinct, but that 30% of survivors are the ancestors to all terrestrial life since that point. I find it funny that in the Permian, the mammals were the kings of the reptiles and like most of the Gorgonopsids actually preyed on reptiles, 
Then a mass extinction happened and it all flipped around. The reptiles took control and those became the dinosaurs. Then of course, the dinosaurs went extinct and the mammals took over once again. Of course, mammals rule most every ecosystem now and it's crazy to see that there hasn't been a big rise in reptiles. I mean, you could say crocodiles, but or like Komodo dragons, but it's not like they're that widespread. I mean, crocodiles are very widespread, but not in the way like a dinosaur or like how mammals are today. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but on this channel, I mainly cover extinct mammals rather than like extinct reptiles such as dinosaurs. I don't know why I like ancient mammals so much, but I guess it's just kind of different because a lot of paleo people just make, oh, dinosaurs this, dinosaurs that. But I think I'm one of the only ones who's really just kind of obsessed with mammals. So anyways, I hope you guys like this video and more ancient animals coming soon. Also, thanks for subscribing. We hit 300 subs and I, I just checked we're at like 328. I mean, I have a lot of thanks for Reddit. I, I posted a video on like biology, got to the top of that subreddit. So I love making these videos and I hope you guys like watching them as well. Again, check out my subreddit in the description. Oh yeah, and comment down below any suggestions for new videos and any scientific inaccuracies I may have made in this video. So I'll see you guys in the next episode of North O2. See ya.